Fitbit has been one of the leaders in the wellness tracking space, having been in the wearables game since about 2007, so a long time. I've been using the Fitbit Charge 5 to get a sense for how it monitors and tracks my sleep. And hey, this thing does some things very, very well. It's not the most glamorous or maybe even the most feature-rich tracker on the market, but I think paying attention to some of the data can make a real difference in how you sleep at night. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of some of its features, but just more importantly, discuss how I use this device to make some changes to my habits. Hey, what's up everyone, I'm Tom. So believe it or not, there was a time not too long ago when Fitbit was the global market leader in fitness tracking and fitness wearables. In 2014 and 2015, if you can think back that far, if you wanted something that tracked your fitness goals and your sleep, well, Fitbit was the choice. But you know what also happened in 2015? Something called the Apple Watch. And we kind of know the story of what happened to the sales of that product. So yeah, in 2023, Fitbit doesn't quite have that same brand sexiness that others do, but what you do get with a Fitbit is a company that's been in this game a lot longer than most others, and one that has earned a reputation for really accurate sleep tracking. Fitbit has a range of devices at a range of price points, of course, but I decided to try out one of the more affordable options. So we got our hands on the Fitbit Charge 5. Now, this one comes in at around $150, which is a really great price point for what it can do. And it can do a lot. With a small device like this, you're gonna be able to track things like your heart rate, your blood oxygen rate, heart rate variability, breathing rates, your steps, distances, calories, and it can even track your menstrual cycle. Now, most of the sleep trackers we've had our hands on are several hundred dollars plus a possible subscription fee. So what's great about this is that if you're looking for an affordable, competent health and wellness tracker, this is a wonderful option. It's not the sexiest, like I said, it's not the flashiest, it doesn't have a collaboration with Gucci or Hermes, but it's gonna get the job done and it's gonna give you some really helpful feedback on your health and your sleep. Oh, it's also a seven day battery, so you can track your sleep for several nights without needing to charge it. Well, speaking of sleep, the Charge 5 is gonna give you a bunch of metrics on your sleep, including things like your sleep duration, your sleep stages, and how long you were in each stage, and your estimated oxygen saturation. You can also set alarms, as well as a sleep schedule, which is gonna help you stick to a sleep routine. Now, when you wake up, it's gonna calculate your sleep score on a scale of one to 100, which will give you some context on how last night's sleep compared to other nights. This is a pretty common thing with sleep trackers, so nothing really out of the ordinary here. Of course, the big question here is, once you have all this data, what do you do with it? It's great that you can measure your sleep and your fitness in a device like this, it does a really good job, but once it's measured, so what? Well, you're not gonna be surprised to learn that like most data, the question isn't how well it collects the information, but what will you do with it once you have it? One of the things I used to tell my students is that learning happens when we take the time to reflect on that which we've learned. So already this amount of data you're given in the Fitbit just kind of begs you to take a look at the data, take a look at the trends and the averages and kind of ask yourself, am I getting what I need? Is the kind of lifestyle that I'm living, the kind of sleep schedule I have, is that setting me up for health and vitality? Now for me, some of what this data helped me understand is kind of this ongoing tension I feel in the evening. You see, naturally, I'm kind of a night owl. I prefer staying up late. I like writing late. I prefer afternoon workouts. In general, I function just much, much better when things are shifted later in my schedule. But the reality of my life, well, that's quite different. I have a middle schooler who needs to be up at 6.30 a.m. We need to be out the door and on the way to school by 7. I'm usually at my desk by 7.45, and then my evenings are packed with workouts, with kid practices, with cooking dinner. It's just, there's a lot going on in my day. And if I go to bed at midnight, well, that's probably a good sign I'm gonna be groggy and cloudy the next day. And that groggy feeling, kind of the feeling of not getting enough sleep, not being sharp enough throughout the day, well, that's another great thing about these data points. Because one of the things that we talk a lot about here at Sleep Foundation is the importance of having a sleep routine and sticking to that routine. So we're talking about having a consistent sleep and wake time every day. That way you can make sure you're getting enough sleep, enough consistent sleep, and waking up feeling refreshed. Now one of the best ways to pair kind of the objective data that you get with something like the Fitbit is thinking about it through subjective data. How do you feel throughout the day? And maybe more importantly, how do you need to be feeling throughout the day? Now, like I said, my days start early, they tend to end late, and then between, there's a lot happening. And I can usually tell throughout the day if I'm struggling with energy, or maybe I just need that extra cup of coffee to get through. And of course, usually my workouts are great at exposing any lack of sleep that I've had. By keeping a sleep schedule, by tracking how well I can keep on that schedule, I've been able to adjust my bedtime earlier in the evening, 
if only reluctantly. Now, the final thing about having all of this data from something like the Fitbit, it really helps me think about certain lifestyle choices I've made. So for example, alcohol consumption, workouts or not working out, bad food, late night food, all of the choices I make contribute to my overall sleep quality. And by looking back at the data this collects, I'm able to make better choices going into my evening. So for example, do I have a big day tomorrow? Well, I should probably skip the drinks tonight. Have I been having trouble sleeping? Well, maybe I need to make it into the gym four days a week instead of just three. In short, by reflecting on what the data shows, I'm able to make both lifestyle adjustments in response to that data, but also proactive adjustments going forward. So the few weeks that I wore and used this device, I really came to love it. I really enjoy how slim the profile of this is. Now, the one thing I did kind of miss is the feature-rich data sets on some of the other devices and apps on the market. But look, this is a wonderful, affordable entry-level device that's gonna give you enough data to, I think, make some real meaningful change to your overall sleep and your overall lifestyle. And that's honestly really the goal of a device like this. Of course, this is just one of many sleep trackers on the market. So for more of some of my favorites, check out this video on our top sleep trackers. Well, that's it for this one, everyone. Let us know down below what sleep tracker you use and maybe more importantly, how it's changed your habits. Thanks for watching everyone, sleep well.